Yesterday, yesterday I mentioned that our guest speaker's bio is kind of lengthy and I'll be sharing it in bits and pieces. So today I'll be sharing the second part of her bio. Sister Donette, who's a pastor and a doctor, was installed to the Shelter Rock Seventh-day Adventist Church and served until December 2016. With her vision and God's guidance, Shelter Rock experienced transformation spiritually, numerically, and structurally. Pastor Blake's desire was always for her flock to have an excellent relationship with Christ. This she demonstrated with her exemplary leadership. At this point, I would like to invite Dr. Blake to come on board and speak to God's children. They are waiting. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are indeed a wonderful host and I truly appreciate you. God bless you as you continue leading this morning. Let me say good morning. Oh, mercy. I'm kind of forgetting that it's your morning and my night. So I'm remembering the, um, this, this morning or this night, whichever one it is. <laughs> but I just want to say good morning to all of God's people, wherever you're viewing from. Uh, whatever the situation, just know that the presence of the Lord is with you. I'm excited to be with you on this beautiful Monday morning for you. Of course, it's Sunday night for me. God bless you. Let's move right into the word. This is what we're here for. And so pray with me, Father in heaven. We thank you. We bless you. It's so exciting, Lord, just to come to share with your children um, your word and to pray together. I'm so grateful for you to you for the privilege you've given to all of us and those who've come, they've joined in. I just pray the blessings of heaven on each of participant and each listener today, whether today or they will hear it later on uh, sometime. God, just let your power be manifested in the lives of your people. Speak through me to us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So I want to continue a little bit from where I left off last night. We were talking about Isaiah 53. We talk about the fact that the Bible tells us that Christ uh, became our substitute. He took our place. We deserve death. We deserve the punishment. But Jesus took it all for us. He stood in our place. Hallelujah, somebody. But the verse Amen. that I kind of zeroed in on was um, verse 5 of Isaiah 53. But he was wounded, the Bible said, for our transgressions. He was mm -hmm. bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace, the punishment for our peace was upon him. And with mm -hmm. his stripes, we are healed. And so I want to kind of zero in on this very last phrase of the text, the last statement, with his stripes, we are healed. So he was wounded, he was bruised, and he was punished. Are you with me? And with Amen. all of that, we have been healed by what he did. So listen, with his stripes, we're healed. And so the question is, what does this really mean? With his stripes, we are healed. And so I tend to, I, I wanted to get a little bit more understanding. So I just did a little more, bit more digging, trying to figure out what is this scripture talking about? And so I recognize that the word stripes really means wounds, right? So, so it is saying, and, and with his wounds, right, we are healed, right? These wounds are stripes were actually inflicted on Christ. Now understand that wounds or stripes usually are inflicted with blows from a whip or a rod, uh, and it was for punishment, right? So whips, um, I'm told in the days of Christ, and probably now, uh, you know, were, were made of braided leather with fragments of pottery and sharp stones attached to the ends. And, and these stones would tear into uh, uh, the flesh, right? Would, would make open wound or cut open the flesh. When, when someone, specifically a prisoner, um, is being punished. And so this kind of rod or whip 
was used to, to beat uh, um, prisoners. And, and when a prisoner was being uh, beaten, it is said that they would strip the prisoner naked so there would be no clothing mm -hmm. on the back of that prisoner. And they would whip the prisoner and, 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 and the, the, the edge or the end of that rod or whip would tear into the flesh and, and, and make open wounds. It, it, is said, it, it is said in Deuteronomy chapter um, 25, as a matter of fact, I believe it's verse three, uh, tells us that a prisoner or someone who's been whipped should not be given more than 40 stripes. So can you imagine someone being whipped with a a, 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 a a rod or a whip that was made with 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 broken stones and and, and broken patches uh, uh, um and 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 that was what was moved into the back as it moved on the back it would leave uh, uh, the skin open 40 40 40 lashes mm -hmm. into the naked back of someone and what I learned is that when the prisoner is being whipped, their hands and feet would be tied, making them helpless. They can't move. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Can you imagine the pain? Can you imagine the scream? This was the inhumane form of physical punishment that was meted out to criminals who were found guilty of committing grievous and wicked acts. Now Isaiah tells us, <laughs> Isaiah is telling us that Jesus was beaten and afflicted with many stripes, <laughs> beaten with a whip that tore into his flesh not only did that whip tore into the flesh of Jesus and made open wounds where the blood would drip from those open cuts, but the Bible tells us that a crown of thorns was placed upon the head of Jesus. And from there also, thorns moving into the skull would create blood, you know, holes and, and cuts where blood would also seep out the back, the head, pain everywhere. Mm. When able to move, Jesus suffered. Listen to me, listen to me. It was not just the physical wounds we Isaiah is talking about. Mm -hmm. Because we've got to understand that, 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 that Jesus' pain and wounds were more than just physical. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was wounded by the mental anguish that was brought on by the wrath of his own father who punished him for the sinfulness of mankind. You see, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 21, that, that God made Jesus who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. First Peter chapter 2, 24 tells us that Jesus bore our sins in his own body on a tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. Have mercy somebody. So Peter is <laughs> Is going back to Isaiah and, and agreeing with Isaiah that it is by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. How is the stripes of Jesus produced? He bore our sin in his own body. We were dead to sin and he took our sins upon him in order that we might live righteously. The wounds made upon Jesus was not just the physical tore, a tearing of the flesh by the whip that was used on his back, but the wounds made were also done by the anguish of separation, that mental uh, uh, pain, the anguish of separation from his father's favor and his father's presence. And that was more severe and deeper than the wounds that were made by the whip that tore into this flesh, as bad as it was and as 
painful as it was when the whip catches back and, and, and the flesh tore open and the blood began to drip. It was not as painful as the very thought mentally that he was separated from his father. The son of God for the first time in history found himself separated from his own father. God separated from mm. God because of mm. the sins of humanity. Mm. I'm understanding it. Uh, by his stripes, we are healed. Um, the writer of Desire of Ages, Desire of Ages, and page 25, page 25 states uh, that Christ was treated as we deserve, that we might be treated as he deserves. Mm -hmm. He was condemned for our sins, uh, in which he had no share, that we might be justified by his righteousness, in which we had no share. He suffered the death which was ours, mm -hmm. that we might receive the life which was his. I'm talking to somebody that this morning. I'm going to read this thing again because I need us to understand it. Christ was treated the way we deserved, that we might treat him, be treated rather the way he deserves. Do you hear me? Christ was treated the way we deserved so that we might be treated the way he deserved to be treated. He was condemned for our sins in which he had no share at all all that we might be justified by his righteousness in which we had no share at all. He suffered death, which was mine, oh. which was yours, that we might receive the life, which was his. Listen to me, somebody. Oh. Christ took our place on the cross. Amen. There is no reason for us to be continuing living in sin. He delivered us from the penalty of death. Amen. When I deserve to die, it was just Jesus who took oh, my place mm. with his stripes, we are healed. The word heal can either mean spiritual or physical healing. Mm. But may I suggest that what Isaiah is talking about, Isaiah 53 and 1 Peter chapter 2, what they're talking about in the context in which they're using the word healed is not physical, but spiritual. You see, we all wanna be healed physically and we'll use that text to pray for physical healing. And it's okay when Jesus walked on earth, he did heal physically. But also I remember, remember I said last evening that Jesus healing of the physical body was pointing, it was a picture of what Jesus came to do, the spiritual healing of the soul. So the righteous here, when they use the word healing, they make it clear that this healing is not physical, but spiritual. The text is talking about <laughs> the spiritual healing from sin. It is talking about <laughs> sin and righteousness, not sickness and disease in terms of the physical, but sin and righteousness healing from sin into righteousness, somebody. Therefore, being healed in both of these verses is speaking of being forgiven and being saved, not about physical healing. So Jesus came to earth to heal us from the disease of sin. And in coming to earth to heal us, to carry out the mission of the spiritual healing, praise God, in the midst of it, it, men and women experienced the physical healing, the mental healing. So can I tell somebody that the greatest healing to receive is the spiritual. And as you are healed spiritually, praise be to God, if he chooses to heal you physically, he will do it. But the main mission of Jesus, his coming to earth, was not to make us happy on earth, was not to give us a great job was not to help us to get the greatest education so we could have great money in the bank. Jesus coming to earth, his sensual mission was to oh. heal us from the disease of sin, was to rescue us from the power of sin, was to Amen. move the poison of sin out of our body and give us freedom from the power of sin. Mm. Oh, don't you understand tonight that sin is a great disease with mm. eternal consequences? Sin is a willful crime against the God of the universe. 
Sin <laughs> is abnormal. Sin is disturbing. Sin is eternally destructive. Sin is a heredity disease that is universal, <laughs> contagious, defiling, incurable, and mortal. No human physician can deal with sin. Death itself can <laughs> never cure sin. Left in sin, we would rot in hell. Do you hear me? Left in our sin, we would mm. rot in hell. But thanks be to God, I feel like shouting somebody. Somebody need to just unmute their mm. mic and say hallelujah tonight. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks hallelujah. God. The Bible says hallelujah. there is a heavenly medication. Ooh, somebody. Mm. The Bible Amen. says there is a medication. That Doctors cannot find it. Doctors cannot give it. Men cannot produce it. It was only produced by Jesus himself. The That's blood man. of Jesus by his stripes, with his stripes, through his stripes, by his wounds, by his brokenness, mm. by the bruises mm. that he suffered, by the punishment that was upon him. Hallelujah. We are Amen. healed from the power Amen. of sin. Jesus' blood becomes the medication that heals us from the power of sin. The healer was wounded for our sin. And with his stripes today, somebody can shout hallelujah. Amen. We are healed from the power hallelujah. of sin. I wonder the song said, would you be free from the power of mm. sin? There is yes. power. Hallelujah. And the blood Amen. of Jesus. So today, tonight, Amen. for me tonight, but for you this morning, mm. wherever you are, <laughs> We can live right before God. Do you hear me? We must live mm. right before God. We can yeah. live right. We can be overcomers. We can be mm -hmm. overcomers. When you go to the yes. doctor and you are sick and the doctor give you medication and you are healed, if you are healed, then you are better. It means mm. that the sickness is gone. If you are not healed, you are still sick. It should not be that we've mm. taken the medication of the blood of Jesus and still be living in sin. It means that it mm. did not have any effect on our sickness and let me tell you something there is still mm. power in the blood of jesus Hallelujah. there's never a time when the blood of jesus is unable mm. to heal us from the power yes. of sin so you come to dr jesus and he Amen. gives you the medication of his blood you got to find healing oh. in the blood Amen. we can walk clean we can mm. live pure before jesus we can be healed from every hurt and every weakness and every unforgiven sin. We can be healed from every grudge that we hold against somebody. We can be healed from that thing, that guilt that holds us down. We can be free from the burden of sin. The song says, so long, I search for life meaning, life's meaning, enslaved by the world and my greed. Then the door of my prison was opened by love for the ransom was paid. I'm free. Yes, Amen. I'm free from the fear of tomorrow. I'm Amen. free from the guilt of my past. Mm. I've traded my shackles for a glorious song. I'm Amen. free. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. I'm free of last. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm. The Lamb of God. Amen. You can be healed from the guilt mm. of sin and shame. For Amen. by his stripes, oh, yes. we are healed. May God bless us. May God give us overcoming power. May oh, we yes. hold on to him, knowing that his blood is still powerful. There mm. is still power, wonder working power oh, in the yes. blood of the Lamb of God. Father, Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus, this morning, as your children hear the reminder of your word, no matter how deep the sin, no matter how great the sin, sin will never be greater than grace. For no, by yes. your stripes, we are healed. Remind them and let your power move through your people, forgiving and cleansing and purifying and making a right that which has gone wrong. Bless, mm. heal and save us, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. God amen. 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 Oh, amen.